Yeah, he's talking about the Presidential Sports Award program. Uh, I'm about to implement that in the school system in San Francisco with these three schools that I do after school program with. Mm -hmm. And I just made a I just made a very basic thing that went according to the guidelines, 50 hours, uh, no more than an hour and a half attributed to one day. Do you have any type of a format or something like that going on with the Presidential Sports Award program for skating that Skating is one of the one of the exercises. It's actually a list, and it goes it has all the sports like canoeing, swimming, right. roller skating, um, bowling, whatever it may be, to get some type of exercise. Uh, those are the points that we're trying to get across to people: is that it could be anything. Uh, it doesn't you don't have to be, go out there and run a marathon every day. Just right. you know, thirty minutes of exercise at least every day, or you know, it, it could be in three ten minute increments. But just to get out there and get exercise, because a lot of kids are they're playing Nintendo all day. You know, they're playing the Xbox, and that's about all the exercise they get. I remember as a kid, we were punished. We, we were told to stay inside. Now kids today are, you know, stay inside, all right, Dad, thanks. You know, and they're out there on their video game. And it's, and it's just it's just kind of sad to see when you see the, the obesity in our country now. You know, and the type 2 diabetes from older people from just because of high blood pressure. You know, it's a way to prevent diseases like this, and that's just through regular exercise and, and preventive checkups. And that's what we're trying to get, the, the message we're trying to get out to people is to do that. And skating is one of those things that you can do it easily. It's just it's a lot of fun. You can go in the park, put headphones on, you can go to roller rink and the disco disco ball and the lights to the music. It's it's just a great, great thing to do. And that's what we're trying to spread across the country. Yeah. I'm not really a short tracker. I, I practice I practice short track, but uh, like in skating, uh, at the world level there's a lot of uh, grabbing and swimming to the pack that goes on and it was really hard for me at times to know that I've trained all year and get to a point where I see the finish line and someone would grab me and take it away from me. That's why long track is such a nice sport because it's you against the clock and there's not any interference. But I do miss the, the camaraderie of the, of the athletes together racing like six or seven guys in a bunch and, uh, and kind of living through that, that, uh, that one race or event. Like if it was raining and you're in a race, you, you look back going, remember that year we raced in the rain? <laughs> You know, it was kind of, it's a neat thing to have a, a relationship with somebody. I do miss that, but um, 2004, I will probably just try and prepare myself for the next games in 2006, so I'm not sure. Maybe Apollo will be there. <laughs> Apollo on it. He's a good skater to watch. Yes? So I, I'm sure you want to tell everyone in the crowd, but who are your sponsors? Are you sponsored by Nike now? Well, I'm not sponsored by Nike, but actually uh, Nike, I have a, they will sponsor our team. The, the United States speed skating team, and I actually have a deal with them that if I need shoes for training, I can call up and say, hey, can I have a pair of shoes for training, they'll, they'll send me shoes. So that's definitely a perk. Also, my, uh, I have a sponsor, Big Bear Mountain Water. I grew up in Southern California, and there's a spring in Southern California on a reservation, uh, Indian reservation, and it's Big Bear Mountain water, Spring Water, premium, premium spring water. And uh, when they found that I was trying to skate the next Olympics, uh, they came on board and helped me out, so they're gonna support me at the next Olympics. That can get there. Now it's a little difficult. I'm traveling, doing things like this. I'm still working at Home Depot. I still have a job with them. And uh, I'm, I'm in floor and wall still, so I haven't really gotten any promotions yet. <laughs> uh, that and I'm a uh, father. That takes a lot of time. And I'm trying to still train at the elite level. So if I can juggle all these things together, then I, I'll hope to be there in 2006. Let's see. I'm also doing other things with like uh, American Chiropractic Association. Um, they were, they were sponsored with me last year. I did get chiropractic work a lot. Um, training at the level we do, six hours a day, six days a week, it takes a toll on your body. And uh, I've had some adjustments here and there, and I hurt my back earlier, two, three years ago, hurt my back, so they were doing some manipulation trying to get me set up for the, the games. And I also do some work with other companies as well, just doing speaking like this. But I actually I have an hour and a half, and I show some videos and things like that, so it's a little different. Anybody else? Yes, I thought that the Olympic Committee and the individual associations were attempting to give athletes with promising futures, and you already have proven yours, so I would think you'd be a part of that financial fund so that you didn't have to work at Home Depot, so that you could be training. Well, I work at Home Depot as part of an O job, it's an Olympic Job Opportunities Program, and I work part time and have full time benefits. Um, I choose to work. I have to have a career after I skate. Um, I have a family. A lot of the younger skaters coming up just skate. But I've always believed that you can't just have skating in your life and that's it. Um, you got to have a balance. Um, 
sometimes I see skaters, even I was in this, in this pool for a while, where I, but I work on my life. I mean, I've left home at 17, I had to work on my life, so it's, it's not a big change for me. Uh, I've seen skaters come home from practice and they're just so focused on their practice, they have a bad day and they're, you know, they're just upset. And they go home, they sit all day thinking about it, thinking about it, go back to practice and it's still in their mind and it kind of gets you in a rut. Or I'd, I'd go to work, right? I work two miles from the rink in Salt Lake, go to work, help some people out, do some things. and. Um, it was like a change of pace. I'd come back to the second practice and I'd even think about my first practice. I think it helped me to, to move on and let things kind of go. Bad, bad practice, let it go behind me, focus on the next practice. And that was good. And plus I have a great, great support group at work. I have you know, a couple hundred employees that are right behind me. And a lot of times I'd, I'd go to work after practice and uh, I'd see a manager and he'd walk by like this. How's it going, Derek? <laughs> <laughs> When I was out there and I was racing, I was not only racing for, for myself, but you know, not, for, not only for all the inline skaters that couldn't be there, but also the people at work who support me every day, who are out there, you know, keep going, we're rooting for you. So um, there is a program, there is some funding, but a lot of times they have uh, an only, like a, how's it called? It's called Per Diem or a, only it's called Operation Gold. You can get somebody that way, but uh, you have to perform at a certain level. So they have Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3. One through four is tier one, five through eight is tier two, and you get like so much money per month if you're at a certain level and you're part of it, you know, in good standing with your organizing body. But after the Olympics, uh, there were some opportunities for me to make some money by speaking and things like that, and I went over the, the cap that they have for an amateur athlete. So I don't get any money anymore. <laughs> but it can only happen, for maybe it only happens this year, so next year I'm actually back where I was two years ago. We were actually, as athletes, kind of upset because they, they have you try to get to a point where you can succeed for the U.S. and for the Olympic Committee, and then it's almost like you're punished in a way because you no longer are in good standing with them financially. You have to start from the bottom again. So it's kind of hard. But uh, I don't want to hold anybody back who's coming up from getting any support. So it's kind of a, you know, a catch-22. Uh, I can go out and try to make some money doing speeches, things like that. Um, and there's some kids that are coming up, you know, that are young that might need some that little bit of funding to, to get in the next level. And I know how that is. I know how it is a struggle. So I'm glad that they, I could give up my spot for that. So, anybody else? Yes. Have you met Tony Stewart? Yes, actually. Uh, did you see Daytona last year where he, he actually crashed? I think he crashed at the end. Yeah, we were at that race. Uh, he looked a little nervous before he went out there. And he didn't really like racing in, in Daytona, but he came back and won the points, so that was nice. But he's not much bigger than I am either. He's only about this this big, actually. I thought he was bigger. I'm sorry. Oh, do I know Tony Stewart? I'm sorry. Yeah, I got a signature on a hat and everything. It was pretty cool. Pretty nice guy. Those guys, those cars go fast, and they're loud. Anything else? Anything else? No. Do you guys get the medals? Do you guys, do you guys see them back there? Okay. Yeah, one's back there in the back. Uh, thank you again for for uh, for your time and. Uh, Keep staying up.